you know, I think there's been a discussion through the 90s and even the early 2000s, it was very convenient. Everybody could kind of, uh, you know, relax a little bit. Yeah. And forget that art should constantly bother you. Mm. That's its point. It's not there to be good, it's not there to be liked, it's not there to be, to make anyone feel good about anything, it's there to remind you that everything's up for grabs. You know, where are we, really, you know, what is possible, you know, what is figurative art, you know, what is abstraction, what is political art. I mean, I just had a discussion with Paul Schimmel in LA, where he really wanted, really wanted me to talk about the idea of the violence of these wars. Figuration always becomes really important when you have wars. You know, in periods of violence and strife, the figure always turns up in art. You're thinking this so hard. Hey, hi, by the way, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, the portraits of these strange, mm. you know, women and the SS officer who says, you know, who did this? And he said, you did. It was very moving for me at the Ishmaelian yesterday. That sculpture, you know, is the great European fantasy of sculpture. I mean, it's Michelangelo, uh, you know, to some extent, built his whole uh, concept of what Renaissance sculpture is going to be from this. These, these antiquities that, you know, we know the story, we know the Greek myth, mm -hmm. and we know the, but there's something about that, and then there's something about the physical presence of that piece, which is, uh, you know, the, the, the deeper you look into it, the more unavoidable that sculpture is, is some sort of idea of time, doom, uh, inevitability, uh, sensuality, uh, sexuality, you know, all of these things. And so uh, I'd forgotten that we were going to place it right in front of that. And so, you know, very strange things like the way I uh, manipulate clay, you know, I, I like to manipulate clay as this um, elemental unit, you know. And when we put the legs in front of that sculpture, suddenly I realise, you know, the snake in this sculpture is kind of an elemental unit of the sculpture formally. But you can't imagine um, those things resonating. Mm. And their resonance was, was very powerful for me. There's an energy there. There's a dynamic mm. there. And I'm not quite sure where that goes. 
But that fascinated me. It was definitely not a predictable energy. Mm. It wasn't like, oh, this goofy guy's turned up from LA with this kind of goofy Gen X joke about antiquity. It was a kind of complicated mm. thing that was going on in those museums. I, I found that very energizing. Mm. from wherever Birkenhead or something walks in and goes, yeah, I, sh I should maybe have a go at this. Yeah. Which is what like the late Picasso show in 86 did to me. You know, it wasn't like I was, you know, reevaluating painting at the end of the 20th century. It just has to catch you and it has to enlighten you in some strange way. And that's really at the end of the day is the key. Mm -hmm. 